of all that you have done. of it. He's full of it. Are you full of it? Not turkey, but thanksgiving. Come on now. We want you to be full of thanksgiving and full of hope today. And we are so excited to have you with us. And Corey, it's great to be with you also. Are you full of it? I am. I am <laughs> full of it. And whatever I need to do to get more of that gratitude inside of me, I am going to do that. Listen, coming up in just a moment, you'll discover how singer and songwriter Justin Gambino is bringing hope and the sound of freedom to others. You don't want to miss our very own Sidney Goldman's conversation with a talented musician as he shares his faith journey and how God has done some incredible things in his life. Plus, we'll have more of his music as well that is a part of our Worship Wednesday. Listen, there is nothing like bringing that <laughs> gratitude in and bringing worship in, especially in this Thanksgiving season. Mm -hmm. I know I have some great plans on what God's going to do. What about you? What, what's your plans for Thanksgiving? 
Well, first of all, I'm going to be so thankful. And of course, first thing in the morning is the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade because I live, Corey, to watch Snoopy come down the street. <laughs> Snoopy just gives me all the vibes, all the feels. But actually, tomorrow, I am only cooking a big breakfast. What? I've got a little break from the bird. Wow. So me and the bird are taking a break this year. We'll come back together maybe at Christmas or something. But I've had a lot of company and a lot of big, uh, hosted a lot of big parties. So tomorrow, I'm going to chill and eat out at Thanksgiving dinner. That sounds exciting. What about you? No, no cleaning up everything. Well, we'll be at my family's <laughs> house. Uh, the family is in from, from Boston and they're all cooks. All of us are cooks. No. And so we're going to be doing a cook, cooking, co cooking competition. We're going to be doing all kinds of different things. Can but, you share your dish? Like, what is it? I don't know yet. I haven't figured it out. I've been so busy. I haven't had the time to really uh, get You're it together. You're in big trouble. All of the women <laughs> right now sitting there watching are cringing. Like, because they know right now, if you even go to the store right now today to pick up your ingredients, we're talking two hours minimum. <laughs> I think I'm going to focus on the desserts. I think I'm just going <laughs> to do like a sweet potato pie or a pumpkin pie. I like both. Yeah. yeah I don't know. What, what, what about you? Is it sweet potato? Is it pumpkin? Ooh, pumpkin, apple, anything. <laughs> but you know what? I think more than just the desserts, more than just the meal, we should feast on gratitude. Mm. We have so much to be thankful for. You know, we're in a culture, Corey, where there's a lot of complaining, there's a lot of groaning, a lot of moaning, but this is not the time for that. This is the time for gratefulness and thankfulness. Absolutely, and I have some great things that I wanna share later on about doing away with complaining completely because of how it messes up your atmosphere. But right now, here's Sydney Goldman with our interview with Justin Gambino. Justin Gambino is a Texan-based singer, songwriter, and military veteran. Before he started traveling across the country and around the world with his hope-filled anthems, Gambino opted to serve in the Navy after being arrested for theft at 18 years old. While serving in Iraq, he rediscovered his love for music. Justin Gambino is with us today to share more of his journey. Justin, we are so glad to have you with us. Thank you for having me. It is a pleasure to be here. Well, it's an honor to have you with us. Now, tell us a little bit about your story and your upbringing, because like a lot of teenagers, you had a bit of a rebellious phase that came about. Yeah, you know, I, in the Gambino household, there was no sleeping in on Sundays. I was, I was raised in church my whole life. My mom would even say that I would bring my Bible to church and strum on it like a guitar. And, you know, I don't remember that, but that's the story that she would tell, you know. And at the age of nine, they started, they tried putting me in like piano lessons because they knew that like, okay, this kid just might be a musical kid. Mm -hmm. And I did not like piano, no offense to the piano players out there, but I did not like piano. But at the age of 15, I got my first guitar. And, um, and, and, but that is also when, you know, I was just thinking about this a couple weeks ago, how like I look back and I see whenever the Lord opened the door for me to start doing music is the same season in my life where the enemy tried stepping in. Because when I got my first guitar and started getting, getting uh, really, um, you know, just plugged into church and leading worship, that's whenever I got my first job and I started getting introduced to a different crowd at my work. And, you know, it was, it only took from age 15 to age 18 before I was standing before a judge, getting judged for what I did wrong, which was theft. Wow. So what was that moment like for you standing before the judge of seeing like where your life had taken you to that point as a teenager? Well, I, I, I knew that I was standing in a place that I did not belong. You know, and I knew that my decisions ultimately are the things that, that led me there because, um, you know, I, I mean, I grew up in church my whole life. Yeah. You know, I was standing there in that moment thinking, I'm not supposed to be here, but I am here because of the choices that I made. And for me, it was a, it was a big wake up call. It really was truly really a big wake up call and so instead of be having doing time behind bars you opted to serve in the military so tell us about your time of serving in the navy and what god started yeah. to do even there yeah i would i would like to say to you today that like i you know willingly joined the navy navy you know i mean i i mean i did i had a choice the judge said justin today you you have two you have two choices you can um, have a felony on your record and you can go to jail today you know you might serve a minimum of 6 months or if you, if you decide to do community service and, and take a misdemeanor on your record, then 
I, I want you to straighten up your life by joining the Navy or joining a branch of the military service. And so I joined the Navy. I signed up for eight years right off the bat, which is a long time. Yeah. But it was in 2007, like you were saying earlier, 2007, I was in the middle of my tour in Iraq during Operation Iraqi Freedom, thinking that, you know, my dreams of doing music was just out the window, you know. I thought that just, I knew that God had called me to do music, but I didn't know how to get back to that. And it was on a Wednesday night, and I went to the chapel on base, and the chaplain asked the whole congregation of maybe 10 or 12 of us. There wasn't a lot of us. And he asked, does anybody know how to play guitar? Does anybody know how to lead worship, have experience doing that? And I raised my hand and asked my dad to ship me my only guitar all the way to Iraq. And that's whenever God, like I look back now and I see just, you know, God was just pursuing my heart and he was putting that guitar back in my hands and what, what, the, what the enemy meant for bad. God meant for good. Wow, yeah. that's an incredible story of just like, even in the midst of war, right? That it's a happening, like unfolding in the world, you know, in the world and then you're right there and you're getting your guitar and then God is like, he's fighting for you mm -hmm. in the midst of it. Yeah. So what was like your rest of your time from there? Were you leading more services during I was chapel? leading services. I was also, since I had my guitar then, I was, you know, sharing songs that I'd written for my Navy buddies. And, you know, it was kind of funny how the Lord was speaking through them to me and they were telling me you're not even why are you here mm. you're not supposed to be in the navy you're wow. supposed to be doing music and and so but i finished my contract in 2013 and started pursuing music full time in 2015 and haven't looked back that's beautiful yeah. that you, like that music that passion set up but that you did hit though some tough times, like after oh, everything, like 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 many veterans and those who served in the military and just oh, being in the midst of war. So tell us about some of the struggles that yeah. you did face after. Yeah, whenever I was overseas, you know, I thought that um, everything that I was dealing with before the Navy, during the Navy, I thought, you know, all the addictions that I had at that time, which I could just leave them. Because like I started, I started to uh, pursue God and do music for God, do worship you know, whenever I was over there. So like, I felt like I was getting back on the right path. And then whenever I came home, I started dealing with PTSD and depression and all the anxiety that comes with it. And really didn't know how to hand that to the Lord until I started, uh, God opened up another door for me to start leading worship at a Friday night Bible study whenever I was home. And so while I was ending my contract with the Navy, I was leading worship on Friday nights. and you know, people from different churches were represented at this Bible study. And so people started telling their pastors and their friends, like, there's this guy, Justin, that's sharing these songs at a Friday night Bible study. Maybe we can get him here to church. And, you know, so in the midst of all these, all these uh, uh, struggles that I was going through and, and addictions at that time, like the Lord just kept on pursuing my heart and opening up these opportunities to focus on things that are for him rather than, you know, just sitting in a dark room and feeling like I gotta, I gotta have a drink at the end of every day. Wow. You know. So I just want to ask you, Justin, how did that worship and just that one-on-one -on -one connection with Jesus really begin to set you free and put you on a different path, even with Him? Mm, that's a great question, because it's pretty recent for me. Even though I was raised in church my whole life, so 2015 is whenever I quit my job, started doing music full time, and I would say from 2015 to 2020 that was a season of my life where I know that God was using the music and I know that God was, was um, working through um, the music ministry. But at the same time, I look back and I, and I know that I was just checking boxes and I know that I was just going through the motions. And whenever everything shut down in 2020, God really got my attention because I found out really quick that I didn't know how to be still in the midst of chaos. I didn't know how to trust Him and just surrender you know, my worries, my burdens, my, 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 my doubt, my fears to him, just lay it at his feet. And in 2020, it was whenever God uh, told me very clearly, I remember I was in Salt Lake City. I just led worship at this church and the Lord said, I want you to go home and I want you to do a night of worship and revival on the grounds of the courthouse back home. And I was, and my, my first, my first thought was, no, I, I don't want to do that because I have bad memories at the courthouse. Mm. I, I don't, I, 
I don't, I don't want to do that, Lord. That's just uncomfortable. That's outside my box. And so finally, after this, you know, this little back and forth with the, with the Holy Spirit, I, I finally said, all right, I'm, I'll do it. And I had to go back to that same courthouse. And, and, but that, it was on the grounds of that courthouse on the stage. It was December 12th, 2020, whenever God said, Justin, I know that you remember coming up here 16 years ago and feeling like you're at the end of your rope. You were just hopeless and helpless, but I want you to know that the same, I'm trying not to cry, <laughs> the same plan that I had for you then is the same plan that I have for you now. The only difference is, is that I have your full attention. That's the only difference. And so I remember on the stage that night, I just hit my knees. The rest of the band is just, they're still going. You know, they're just, they're just like, Justin's on his face weeping, but we're just going to keep going. And that's whenever... Um, I started writing this new record and the Lord made it very clear to me that this, uh, this new music is going to reach the prodigals because that was me. I was a prodigal. I felt like on the stage of the, the courthouse lawn that night was whenever the prodigal son came to his senses and turned because the prodigal son knew what was right, knew what was wrong, you know, but he came to his senses and started back home. And I felt like that was whenever the Lord saw me from a long way off. That is so like touching and just, you know, just seeing the emotion and tears in your eyes of that moment yeah. where God like met you there that he's like, I had the plan all along and I'm yeah. bringing you back home. And, yeah. you know, we just have about a minute left. Can you just share even the word and the message that you've been sharing with those when you're now on stage and you're spreading that message of hope and freedom to others yeah. about God making his home in our hearts? Yeah, um, the Lord convicted me of just going through those emotions uh, during the pandemic and all the cancellations and shutdowns, I was doing some house projects and doing some renovations. And the Lord just asked me very simply, said, Justin, when are you going to allow me to renovate your heart like you're renovating this home? Because I feel like you've been treating me like a house guest. I want access. I want the master key. I want the master key to your heart where I have access to every room, every corner of your heart. Will you, will you, just, will you just let me have that master key? And I've been encouraging people like that this year is give him that master key. He's got the same plan he had years ago, the same plan he has for you now. Just give him your full attention. I love that so much. Like give God the master key to your heart. Thank you so much, Justin, for sharing thank your you story. For, thank you for having me. Oh, it's such an honor and a joy. And just really appreciate your humility and sensitivity to the spirit and also the powerful way that you lead others to mm. freedom because of what he's done yeah, in you. God. Who Christ sets, sets the, who the sun sets free is free indeed. Thank praise you so God. much. <laughs> Thank you. This gift of life from you I can't comprehend All my days I've tried I've tried to understand Oh I've tried I've tried so hard In this season of doubt would you show me your heart? Would you show me your heart? And I believe in you, but would you help my unbelief? Because I can't seem to find you midst of all my grief Oh, I've tried You know I've tried so hard In this season of doubt Would you show me your heart? Would you show me your heart?
find my rest in these times great is your faithfulness all I need is to be right where you are and show me that my home is within your heart in your This is the Thanksgiving season, and, and recently God has been dealing with me about some things that I have been allowing in my life for some time, and that is complaining. And so I made a decision in my life to say, you know what, I'm really going to stop complaining. I started finding that complaining is actually a subconscious command to our atmosphere. When you say, I'm frustrated, I'm upset, I'm tired, I'm angry. We're literally commanding ourselves to be obedient to the words that we speak. Now we hear and see, we hear this all the time, life and death is in the power of the tongue, but do we really understand the collective weight of what that really means? When the scripture says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18, it says, in everything give thanks for this is the will of God in concerning you in Christ Jesus. And if you read that backwards, if you wanna know what the will of God is, it is in everything to give thanks. Having a heart of gratitude, a heart of thanksgiving that is a revolving door in your life, no matter what. It's not just, hey, God, thank you for this car. Hey, God, thank you for my family. Everything's going well. We're all getting together for the holidays. No, God, thank you for breathing. Thank you for life. Thank you for understanding. Thank you that when I went through that dark time, I did not lose my mind, but you still kept me in my right mind. I believe that if you wake up every day and you just begin to give God thanks and not just tell him and ask him for things that, you, that we need and say, God, I need this. I need a little bit more money. And God, I would love to be married. I'd love to be in a relationship, Lord. But to say, God, thank you. Thank you for breath. Thank you for life. Thank you for the opportunity. Because if you look around the world, there are people who don't know where they're going to sleep who can't find their loved ones through war, people that are starving, people that are dealing with deep wounds in their heart, you ought to be grateful that the Lord's hand on your life has allowed you to be here. So I'm thankful and I wanna just, Amy, share some things that you're truly, truly thankful for in this season. Oh man, what are, what are we not grateful for? I heard this the other day, Corey, and I thought it was so good. This gentleman said, when somebody asks me, how are you doing? My response always is grateful. I'm grateful. And you know, I just attended a funeral this past week and I, I sat with a 93 year old young woman that was telling me about how she watches Cornerstone television. And here we were burying her son. And she just said, I'm so grateful. I'm thankful for the years that I had with him. So, you know, this, this might be a tough time. It might be an incredible time, but it could be a tough time. Why don't we choose just to focus on all the good? Just look for all the good. Get up and just say, I'm, I'm thankful that I'm loved by God today. I'm so loved. Thank you, Lord, for a breath. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for peace. Thank you, Lord, for what you did for me on the cross. Thank you, I've got a bed to sleep in. Thankful, Lord, that I've got food to eat. Thank you for a roof over my head. I'm so grateful, I'm so thankful. So when somebody asks you on Thanksgiving, what, how are you? I'm grateful. And we're grateful that you joined us today on Hope Today. We are praying for you and your family. Now let's go to Justin Gambino as he sings Courage. Days 
when I start to lose sight of who I'm born to be And the voices inside of my head I start to believe They say that I'm going nowhere And where I am I don't belong But something inside my heart says they're wrong I won't give up I won't lose hope As long as you're breathing this air Into my lungs I won't let go I won't let go The road on this journey Can sometimes be so hard to bear Sometimes it's hard to find someone who says that they care But there are those who would believe that I've got something to say It is those very people who inspired my lead for faith I won't give up I won't lose hope as long as you're breathing this air into my lungs, I won't let it go. And I'll stand tall. I'll stand my ground. Knowing that you're fighting on my behalf, my courage I found. As long as you're breathing this air into my lungs, I won't.